Guyana and Venezuela recently struck a peace deal in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The heads of state of both countries met and made a peace pact under what is now known as the Argyle Peace Declaration. Then what do you know? Days ago, it was announced that Britain was sending a warship to Guyana. Curious minds want to know what for. Will this decision help or harm the current status quo between Guyana and Venezuela? Will it complicate matters as far as the peace declaration made between the two countries and the recent ruling by the International Court of Justice? There could be serious implications with the latest development and that's precisely what we will explore together in this episode. The primary question we will seek to answer is whether a British warship sailing to Guyana or near Guyana can be taken as quote-unquote aggravation of the border dispute with Venezuela in the context of the recent ruling by the International Court of Justice regarding the, court, the current border crisis between Venezuela and Guyana. You are watching The Final Takeaway, where we analyze information and facts and provide opinions on controversial matters of interest across the globe. Like, share, and subscribe to keep up with new videos as soon as they drop on our channel. Thank you for your support if you already subscribed and are a part of our growing community. We value your support 100%. Thanks for staying with us. Let's get to it, shall we? On Christmas Eve, when everyone was in the spirit of the season, headlines across the globe read, UK to send warship to South America amid Venezuela tensions. UK to deploy naval ship to Guyana after Venezuela territory claim. Britain to send patrol ship to Guyana amid Venezuela border dispute. The central question in everyone's mind is, why is Britain sending a warship to Guyana? News sources reveal that Britain is sending the Royal Navy patrol ship, the HMS Trent, HMS Trent, to take part in exercises with Guyana as tensions rise over the mineral-rich Essequibo territory. This territory, for those who don't know, is a part of Guyana. This breaking development follows on the heel of David Rutley, the Under Secretary of State for the Americas and the Caribbean, recent visit to Guyana. Rutley is quoted as saying the UK will work to quote unquote ensure the territorial integrity of Guyana is upheld. Meanwhile, the UK Ministry of Defense is quoted as saying HMS Trent will visit a regional ally and Commonwealth partner Guyana later this month as part of a series of engagements in the region during her Atlantic Patrol Task deployment. In short, the decision to send the ship is cited as a quote-unquote show of British support for Guyana, which is a member of the Commonwealth. And just a bit of quick historical facts. The Commonwealth is an international association of states including countries that were colonized and ruled by the British Empire. Of course, Guyana is now independent of British rulership. However, the country inherited a border dispute in 1899 and has not been able to get Venezuela off of its back ever since. You see, back in 1899, British Guiana and Spain were at odds as to the boundaries of Guyana and Venezuela. Where did British Guiana start and end and where did Venezuela begin? A panel of arbitrators in Paris, France thought they could get together and try to resolve the issue. After looking at the facts, they determined that Britain would have sovereignty over Essequibo, which is a territory in the then British Guyana and the current independent Guyana sovereign state. But Venezuela isn't having it and has always protested the award, calling it invalid. The country believed it got a raw deal and even suggested there could have been some sort of collusion to award Essequibo to Guyana. Venezuela made its feelings clear on May 26, 
1966, on the day Guyana was officially free from the shackles of British colonial rule. On May 26, 1966, Venezuela invaded a region of Asiquibo called Ancoco. So technically speaking, they already the country already breached Guyana's as sovereignty. It does not plan to stop there. The country wants the entire of Essequibo, all 60,000 square miles, which represent practically two-thirds of Guyana and a rich oil region called Essequibo. Guyana did not make a substantial move to expel Venezuelans who set up a military base in Ancoco. For Guyana, Venezuela's invasion of Ancoco Essequibo does not change the fact that the entire territory is under Guyana's control. However, Venezuela, spearheaded by President Nicolas Maduro, wants to annex or seize all of Essequibo and make it a Venezuelan state they will call Guayana Essequiba. But that's just a bit of the backstory here. More recently, the border controversy was reactivated under President Maduro's government and after extensive oil reserves were discovered in Guyana, offshore the Asequibo region. Maduro would go on to do something that was a first for Venezuela. He held a special election seeking approval from Venezuelans to seize Esequibo. He boasted that the December 3rd referendum was successful with over 95% of the citizens turning out to vote and agreeing to annex Esequibo and make it a Venezuelan state. Maduro then proceeded to threaten to take over Esequibo ASAP. A SAP and issued warnings to those holding oil concessions offshore Guyana to get out. This includes the kingpin of oil, Exxon Mobil. And right when the world thought the situation had reached an explosive point, right when it looked like the two countries were on the brink of war, Maduro and Guyana's President Irfan Ali agreed to meet for a discussion on the matter. On December 14, the two presidents met and agreed to de-escalate the tensions. They agreed to work towards a peace resolution as mandated by the 1966 Geneva Agreement. Both countries had signed the Geneva Agreement in 1966, but have been unable to resolve the spot over ever since on who owns or who should have a sequibble as part of their territory, which led to the current case in the World Court also known as the International Court of Justice. But back to the peace agreement reached two weeks ago in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. To many, this seems like a positive step in the right direction. So Britain sending a warship to Guyana after the two nations brokered a peace agreement is like walking it backward. In fact, Venezuela, its allies, and even the world court can interpret this move as an aggravation of the current dispute over the validity of the 1899 arbitral award that granted a sequel to British Guiana. So, how will this play out? What's on the agenda? What's with this Navy ship traveling to Guyana? Based on reports, the warship will anchor off Georgetown, the capital of Guyana, while their naval members will meet with the Guyana Coast Guard and its naval allies and carry out joint activities and training. The British naval vessel will dock will not dock in Georgetown because the city's port cannot accommodate such a huge ship. Regardless of whether it docks in the capital city of Guyana or elsewhere, the purpose remains clear, and that is to show support for Guyana's for Guyana amidst the current border controversy. All of this may sound all fine and dandy on the surface, but dig a little deeper in, into the historical dispute between the two countries and the recent court ruling, and this can be taken as a brazen move by Britain on Guyana because 
Guyana is the host country. The naval vessel is reportedly used mainly for anti-piracy, anti-smuggling, and anti-terrorism missions. It also performs search and rescue operations and provides humanitarian aid. Outside of that, the HMS Trent conducts border patrols and defense diplomacy, according to the Royal Navy. So the answer to the question of why Britain is sending the Navy ship to Guyana is one or all of the above. The reasons seem, the reasons that seem more befitting to the current border crisis are one, border patrol, and two, defense diplomacy. The big question is how will Venezuela react? On the surface of it, sending a Navy ship to Guyana that conducts border patrols and defense diplomacy seems like a great move or a terrible mistake, depending on if you are Venezuela or you are Guyana, right? While Britain's show of support for its former colony may be beneficial for Guyana on one hand, can it hurt the progress the two countries seem to have made two weeks ago when they declared and committed to keeping the peace? What if Spain decides to show support for its former colony and send a naval ship to peruse Venezuela's waterways near Essequibo, near Guyana's border? Share your views in the comment section, but hey, wait a minute, there's more. Let's look at the Argyle Peace Agreement, where the two nations agreed on nine essential things. Then we'll look at what the World Court recently ordered both Venezuela and Guyana to do. From that, we will determine if this is a miscalculated move on the part of Guyana. Under the Argyle Peace Agreement, declaration rather, the countries establish the following. I'm going to only go over three that is relevant and pertinent to this whole Navy ship situation. Number one, they agreed that Guyana and Venezuela directly or indirectly will not threaten or use force against one another in any circumstances, including those consequential to any existing controversies between the two states. Number two, they agreed that any controversies between the two states will be resolved in accordance with international law, including the Geneva Agreement of 1966. And number six, they agreed that both states will refrain, whether by words or deeds, from escalating any conflict or disagreement arising from any controversy between them, the two states will cooperate to avoid incidents on the ground conducive to tension between them. Now, let's take a glance back at what the World Court ordered both countries to do on December 1, 2023. In making a provisional ruling on the border controversy between Guyana and Venezuela, the court unanimously agreed and ordered the countries to do the following. 1. Pending a final decision in a case, the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela shall refrain from taking any action which would modify the situation that currently prevails in the territory in dispute, whereby the Cooperative Republic of Guyana administers and exercises control over that area. Basically, don't do anything until we make a decision on the case. Number 2. Both parties shall refrain from any action which might aggravate or extend the dispute before the court or make it difficult to resolve. Pretty clear. Let's be clear on this. Both countries were ordered to keep it together, even though Guyana is not seen as the aggressor, at least not active or overt aggression thus far. Besides, following the peace deal between the two nations, 
we have not seen any significant statement or action by Venezuela to suggest it is acting wayward against the peace agreement, at least not up until the announcement that a British warship is headed to Guyana. But what about Guyana? Is the government getting ahead of itself with Guyana agreeing to accept the British warship into its territory? Does this constitute an aggravation of the border controversy with Venezuela? Does it go against the ICJ order to refrain from doing anything that can escalate the situation? It's a legal question under international law, and I am no expert in the field, but we could use common sense to decide. The final takeaway thinks perhaps Guyana should not have made this move, at least not just yet. The country only recently agreed on the Argyle Peace Declaration to not threaten or use force against one another, against Venezuela in any circumstances, against Guyana in any circumstances, and that they will refrain, whether by words or deeds, from escalating any conflict or disagreement arising from any controversy between them. All that's left for us to do is wait and see how this will play out. Why did Guyana even agree for a British warship to drop by at this point in time? We will say Venezuela is keeping a close eye on the situation. Based on reports, the country is on alert. Naturally so, who wouldn't be? Keep an ear out for our next video to update you on the developments and possible re-escalation of tension between the two South American countries. Here is another chance to subscribe and do share our videos across your social media platforms to help spread the awareness of what could very well be a brewing war between the two countries. See you in the next video.